Hi, I'm Jack in the training department, and welcome to another episode of Teardown Tuesday. The episode today we're going to be looking at this gas pressure regulator, and this particular regulator is unique. This regulator has a special function called a dead end lockup. And the, the reason we have that we'll get into here in a bit, but the, the place you would recognize these is in a high pressure step down. So these regulators commonly show up when we're dealing with natural gas at 2 PSI. And you can see this one is a 2 PSI regulator. Uh, you can see this one is a 2 PSI rated regulator. And pressure output on this is 7 to 11 inches. So this regulator would be used for a step down on a service line. And we may have more regulators after this for the individual pieces of equipment especially if they need to get down to three and a half or five inches of water column. But this regulator is designed to take two PSI incoming pressure and step it down to seven to eleven inches output pressure. This regulator is different than a standard poppet regulator. And a poppet regulator would be like this RV48 cutaway. The RV48 lets gas flow through it all the time. There's no position in an RV48 where it completely stops gas flow. And if gas flow comes to a stop, the output pressure rises to match the input pressure. So if you had 2 PSI input on this regulator, the output pressure, when there's no flow, would rise to 2 PSI. Now we can't have that happen with equipment that's sensitive to pressure, specifically gas valves. So this regulator has a special feature that prevents the output pressure from ever rising above the set point. So whatever the set point is, we're going to rise just a hair. So if we're at seven inch, we may go to seven and a quarter inch and then stop. And I'll show you how that works once we get it apart. Before we get it apart, let's look at the vent. So some regulators we see and other components have a vent built into the cap here. This one does not. It has a threaded vent. It's actually called out vent on the label or on the casting. And it has a check ball vent regulator. So if the diaphragm were to rupture in this, that check ball would fall to the restricted position and limit how much flow could come out of this vent. Because this has a check ball in it, this regulator has to be installed in a certain position. It can't be installed upside down, for instance, because the regulator will close. The regulator safety cap here will close. So pay attention to what style vent cap your particular regulator has when installing. Let's also pop the cap off, the cap off here. And you can see we've got a pretty good size adjustment screw in here. And the reason this is so big is because we have a pretty good size spring in here. And this spring controls the pressure on our diaphragm. So now to get this any further apart, we've got to get these rivets out. So I'll take a few minutes and get those out and then I'll be right back. So in order to get this apart, we had to pound out all the rivets because these are not made to be serviceable. But we've already pulled the spring out so we don't have any tension on it. So here's the inside. That's our cover. This is our diaphragm. There's a gasket here. This is just a, a simple cork gasket. You can see we've got this clip or hook on the bottom of our diaphragm. And inside it acts on this lever. And this is the really interesting part about this style of regulator. When it's regulating pressure, what it's doing is it's controlling this lever. And we're working on principle of surface area. And you can see our flow direction, so this side is our outlet. And when the gas flow stops, we would normally have 
pressure equalize across both sides of this connection. Except we have this big diaphragm on top and the diaphragm moves up and when it moves up it lifts this hook which then lifts this lever and closes the inlet. So when this 2 psi inlet pressure starts to increase, our gas flow stops and the pressure in here starts to increase, the diaphragm rises and it locks down. It lifts this lever. And this is our lockup function. And this is what's really critical to understand is this style diaphragm is regulating with this lever, with this lockup, so that when gas flow stops, the outlet pressure does not rise past the set point. It's a really interesting setup. Mechanically, it's pretty simple, but it's very hard to describe and understand unless you see exactly what's going on. Diaphragm lifts, lever lifts, valve closes. Pretty neat, pretty simple. Let's pull that lever out just so we can see it. I have to get a nut driver for that. Let's try. It. Oh, there we go. Kind of stuck down in there. So there it is. This is our lever. And there was our little pivot pin that just fell out the bottom. So the lever has a small gasket here in the end. Got a little pivot to it. And when we look at how it relates to the diaphragm, it just sits like this. So as the diaphragm moves up, the lever moves with it and closes down that inlet. Ways that these fail are almost always in the diaphragm. That's why they have that special vent regulator. If this diaphragm gets brittle or cracks or mechanically gets damaged from all the motion back and forth against this edge, it will eventually leak through to the back. And when it leaks through to the back, it's going to come out the vent. So it's very important to always make sure you have the caps on these so they don't get anything down inside, but also so they don't leak back out through the cap and that you have a vent installed, you have a vent cap installed. But that's it. This one I think will be a good one. I'll probably turn this into a cutaway so that you can see the, the action, the mechanism inside there. I'll take this over to the bandsaw and cut the center out of the bottom here so you can see the lever action. Project for another day. Thanks for joining. Hi folks. My name is Jack Kell and I'm a senior technical trainer for SmartCare. The video you've just watched is part of a larger series of technical training videos we make available to our technicians at SmartCare. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I'll be releasing a new component teardown video every Tuesday in 2022. If you're already a SmartCare technician and you have a part that you'd like to see me tear down, please reach out to me internally for shipping instructions. If you're not a smart care technician, but you or someone you know would like to learn more about a career as a service technician specializing in commercial restaurant equipment, please check out our open positions at www.smartcaresolutions.com forward slash careers. Thanks for watching.